this part of me inside my pride and threw away the key smothered my voice to suffocate my truth then I met you you saw the truth I tried to hide Forced it to the outside and shattered the lies. I'm not perfect, I know, but I know perfectly. Our love is love, and that's for sure. And we're perfect, May. And this love we have is more than words. We work to make it work. Cause love is love, no matter what. y'all keep it real with Raheem Brazil this is the first episode and we already are having an amazing time because that was such a dynamic performance by my homeboy Nick P he did such an amazing job but before we get into his interview I want to welcome you to the first show listen I'm so excited the first show Listen, we have such an amazing show. I have some very special guests coming on today to talk to you about the struggles that you may be having with love and why it's so important to talk about love. It's also important to talk about self-growth, self-elevation and self-acceptance. And that's what we want to do here on Keep It Real. So, Nick P, like, tell us about Love is Love. Mm -hmm. So how Love is Love was conceived, uh, my co-producer, Soul Sounds. Um, he wanted me to write a song that anyone could relate to. My number one inspiration for that song was Sam Smith. Um, oh, dope. Yeah. And I love the way that his music can reach anyone. Um, it isn't for one particular way to love, for one particular community. Anyone can listen to his music and connect with it. And so I wanted to write an anthem that had that similar nature. Yes. Yeah. And it was such a powerful piece because I felt like it came from the heart, especially like the visual, mm -hmm. the visual and like in how you had like just different people in the sequence of the visual, mm -hmm. like like different types of people. It, mm -hmm. you know, it encompasses that feeling of like love can be for everybody. Love is just love. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, tell us about 
why you think love is such an important element to the human race? Well, I think love is who we, what is the one thing that we all at our core look for. That's the one thing that we all long for. And I think what happens is we look for it in different ways. We may yeah. look for it in sex. We may look for it in, in drugs and parties and all those things, you know, depending on how you define drugs. But all of those things um, may have their um, various places in our life. Yeah. But I think at the core of all those desires, we all want to love and we all yeah. want love. Yeah. Um, and so I think that a song that helps people to tap into that, just the bare bones who we are as human beings. Yeah. I think that helps us to say, you know what, maybe I can find love in not just, you know, these other superficial things I'm looking for. Maybe yeah. it's just a human desire that I have to connect with other humans. So. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, it's so, so impactful. Um, that's why I like created a song happy mm -hmm. because I want to give people the feel, the, the, feeling of um, being empowered through music in a way that it reached them to understand that they can they can have this without needing somebody else. Mm -hmm. Like it can come from you. And I feel like your song um, kind of reminds me of happy in yeah. a way it's just talking about love. Yeah. And so let's talk about keeping it real with who you are as a person mm -hmm. and keeping it real with how you show up to other people? Mm -hmm. The first lyrics in my song say, I try to hide the truest part of me. And I think that line, um, anyone can relate to that. Yeah. Because even it doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, pansexual, demisexual, bisexual, yeah. um, that's immediately where people go to. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't matter how you love, we all, sometimes we want to hide the fact that we're insecure. Yeah. Or hide the, the fact that we are scared of rejection. Yeah. Or hide the fact that we're nervous. We yeah. want to seem like we got it all together. You know, you know, this person feeling me, I'm feeling this person. Or I'm thinking I'm feeling this person. Yeah. Or I'm thinking this person is feeling me. I hope they are. Yeah. But let me just look like I'm not really worried about it. You yeah. know, sometimes we hide that. Yeah. And I think that truth, um, when we are able to face our truth, yeah. we're able to show up to people yeah. um, more, you know, confidently. Um, we're not afraid to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous. Yeah. You know, I, I really feel you, and I'm nervous about this date we're having tonight. Yeah. So I think um, when we're tapped into our truth, I think it allows people, other people, to tap into their truth too. Yeah. yeah. I love that. So tell us what you have coming up next. So the whole month of February, I have a huge promo. Um, plan of promotions for the for the single. Yeah. Um, I am going to be doing some things with um, a lot of um, social lights on social media. Awesome. Um, I'm also going to be doing another release of the song, a remix of the song. Oh, a remix. Yeah. Okay. So are, are, are you going to have like extra individuals on there? Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to say too much about it, but it's going to be a little bit more on the fun side. Okay. I think the remix is going to be a fun version of it. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, y'all make sure y'all stay tuned to everything that Nick P has going on. And make sure you check out his video, Love is Love. We'll put it in the description box. But um, before we switch over, we want to make sure that you are sharing and liking this video. And make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Help get our numbers up. And I want to welcome you to... Keep it real with Raheem Brazil. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. I have some very important guests who's going to tell you all about love. That L-O-L-O-L-O-V-E, baby. So y'all stay tuned right here. <laughs> to make sure you're giving it to the person who not only understands it, but also sees how important it is and will cover you right back. Yeah. So love is a covering. Our parents impacted us. Now, did that play out as far as what love is and what love does? That's another question. Brazil. I want to 
to thank you all for tuning in to keep it real with Raheem Brazil. I just also also want to just thank you for tuning into the very first episode. Now that it's here and coming to fruition, I just want to say thank you for your love and your support and your guidance. And also thank you to the people that's behind the camera. Listen, I have so many great guests for this season and it's going to be such a dynamic season and what you need to do is make sure you follow us and subscribe to the network the Raheem Brazil network right here make sure you click the notification bell and subscribe so you can stay tuned to all of the great content that we're going to be bringing towards for you and to you but joining me on the show today is two impactful individuals that have made an impact in my life but they're also my great friends and they have a lot to say about love and everything else because they're so highly intelligent so joining me first is going to be the lovely t marie now she is a dating coach and serial entrepreneur she got it going on she is a badass for real everybody who helped me welcome t marie yes Before you go to the next, I'm what? so proud of you being able to yeah. say fruition. I fruition. can't say that word at I, all. Babe, it was Listen. about to not come out because <laughs> you did it, that though. It was about to. It was like hmm. y'all know from Baltimore, yeah, I can't talk. Right. <laughs> I love but that. T Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud Thank to be you. here. Thank you for choosing me to be one of your first guests. Yeah. Well, I, I had to because you know on this segment, like I, I couldn't think of anybody else who could really give me some great tips about love because this is your field. Yeah. This is what this is what you do. This is what I do. I love you know, it and, and I know one thing you're gonna do is keep it real. For yeah. real. You're gonna keep it real. You're gonna keep it all the way. With Raheem real. Brazil. Period. You already <laughs> said it. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. <laughs> all right. And joining us on the show, this man is so talented, beyond talented, and he's been able to transcend into different areas of the industry. He's an actor. He's a filmmaker. He's a content creator. He's just all around creative. And I just want to welcome and say thank you for coming, Mr. Chris June, everybody. Yes. Thank you so much, Ryan. I'm just so proud of you. You and your journey has thank been you. transformational. Thank and you. And you stay true to yourself, and it's just continued to bloom. And I'm, so, I'm just glad to still be here. Yes. Oh, I'm glad that you were here because, you know, we've had so many great talks. Yeah. And we um, have always, from what I can tell, since we've known each other, we've been those people that, that has always considered others and we're always trying to educate and build and uplift others. And that's one of the things I really um, appreciate about you, your spirit and the humanness of like who you are. And I just want to say thank you. If nobody ever gave you flowers, like you're, you're really doing it. Like even still to this day, you always speaking life into somebody. And I think that's so dynamic and important. I appreciate yes. that. I know how it is to be overlooked, to be hurt and yeah. whatnot. So yeah. you can't help but speak from that space and make sure yeah. that you're being the change that you want to see. Period. Yeah. Okay, so I have a show planned for us centered around love because um, while it's for everybody else, it's also for me too. Um, because what I believe on this show is that we can use our personal testimonies in order to help um, the livelihoods of others yeah. and to help them self-elevate. And I believe in self-elevation. I believe in, you know, that people can change. And if they want to, I do believe that we can find different ways to impact the lives of others by being transparent with our stories and everyday things that we, everyday journeys and things that we've been through. So let's have a, a honest discussion about love. Okay. You know, everybody um, has a different approach to it. But essentially, I feel like everybody wants it, mm. even if they say they don't. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, you mm. know, as humans, it's a part of our nature mm. to want to um, find value and importance yeah. and mm. um, self-discovery. And so let's talk about how would you describe love? Mm. T. Well... You know, I'm, I think love is very, it's, first of all, love is a covering, okay? We, we got to understand what love really is. 
Love is a covering. Mm. Love is the thing that covers all, forgives all, encompasses all. And that's why, you know, my belief is that it doesn't belong to everybody. You have to really be careful who you give love to. Mm. Because love is that one thing that is the most forgiving uh, part of you. And when you give it to a person, you have to make sure you're giving it to a person who not only understands it, but also sees how important it is and will cover you right back. Yeah. So love is a covering and it is protective and it is all encompasses of all your mistakes and all the things that come with you. And so when you are talking about, about love, you're talking about one of the most important yeah. pieces of not just your life, but just how you feel and, and yeah. how you do and what you move in. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. so, that's so important. Chris. Yeah. I would say love is available at all times. Mm. You know, it's something I learned as a creative that it was waiting on me when I was doing the audition tape for me to love what it is that I was doing. Mm. It was waiting on me to transfer that energy of that bad situation into a song. Yeah. It was always waiting on me to express what was there. And in the action of doing so, I started to show up in effect of love. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It has a function. It has utility. And so yeah. when we realize that it's there, the values themselves, they don't exist outside of us. They're not in another person. Yeah. Somebody is a manifestation of those values. They embody those values, but those values are not tangible things. Mm. They're intangible things. Mm. What is trust but trusting yourself? Mm. What is compassion but showing it to yourself? What is kindness but having it for yourself? Mm. What is long suffering with another person when you understand the revelation that it's brought in you? abstaining and, and just resisting, you know, your own uh, ideas of what things need to be yeah. to realize something on the other side of it. So for every tenant of love, when we exercise it ourselves, we can experience it. And it's in that that we share that with another person mm. and invite them in. Yeah. Oh, that's so that's so powerful. I'm, I'm learning that um, because, in you know, I would say that I'm new to this love journey. Mm. Honestly, I would say I'm new to it because I believe growing up, I had a uh, the wrong ideas of what love was because it was never truly mm. given to me in the aspect that I would have loved. Mm. And now that I have started a new self journey, I... Um, it's new for me. Mm -hmm. So like, like the things that y'all talking about, like what love is, that's like, wow, I've been gaining that, t that same insight, that same mindset. And so I want to talk about love versus attachment mm. because we attach ourselves to the ideas of what love mm -hmm. is and we make it useful for us in ways that can be toxic. Mm -hmm. It can be, um, it can rob us of our peace, our livelihood, just our mental. We can lose ourselves. And I think it's so important that it is a thin line. It's a very thin line between love and that other thing um, that we create, like self-infliction, um, affliction or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, a yeah, thin yeah. line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, like what you were saying, you got to be very careful who you give it to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Um, I've attached myself to different things in my journey, trying to find love. Mm -hmm. And so I've, it's been people. It's been oh, oh, my oh, when it wasn't people, it was my work. When it was work, it was it, it was something I, I felt like I had to attach. I had to find something that would feed me that. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about love and versus attachment. Have you been in a situation where you attached to the wrong things mm -hmm. trying to find that love yeah um there is a thin line between love and attachment especially when you're going look when you're going looking for love when you're not whole the one thing about searching for love is being whole first mm -hmm. because yeah. if you don't you're going to go start looking for things that fill those yes. holes that you do not have mm -hmm. right. and that's what creates that attachment it mm -hmm. makes you feel like if i leave this person then i won't have that feeling mm -hmm. that yeah. i need yeah. so it's always important before you even start talking about love looking for love yeah. you know get in a relationship am i good am mm -hmm. i solid do i have what i need right. do i know what i need 
do I understand who I am? What makes me feel this way? Can I give those things to myself? Mm -hmm. Love starts with you first. If mm -hmm. you don't love you, then you'll go out trying to find people, places, things, activities that fill you. And you'll think that it's love, but it, it really is addiction. Mm -hmm. It's something that you got to have in order to feel whole. Yeah. So the thing about that thin line is really starts with you being solid in the beginning. Mm. Yeah. So if you're solid in the beginning, you're less likely to attach to things that you can't let go. Mm. Love yeah. should feel free. You yeah. know what I'm yes. saying? It should feel free. Very true. And what yeah. you're talking about is like when you don't deal with in yourself what you need to, you try to deal with that in other people. Mm -hmm. So what we don't, we try to deal with in other people what we haven't dealt with in ourselves. Yeah. Right. And so we want to associate ourselves with values, with people, mm -hmm. to fill in those voids because we're not whole, and then we end up attached because now it's symbiotic. I'm relying on you to make up for the part of me that I that I lack in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I'm not able to be whole. I'm not able to show up fully and to be able to contribute because who I who am I outside of you? Mm -hmm. And if I'm so reliant on you, then everywhere I go in my life, I'm going to be thinking about you and how you would show, mm. how you're showing up in my life and it's going to impact every other area of my life because I am attached to that yeah. person. This is when we be in relationships and we be out somewhere we can't stop thinking about that person and it's a, impacting our ability to have conversations yeah. and our ability to connect. We're ruminating and playing over situations that have been happening in, yeah. in our mind and whatnot because we don't know who we are outside of it. And I think that comes from when sometimes growing up with parents we think that just because we were there and that our parents really loved us, our parents impacted us. Now, did that play out as far as what love is and what love does? That's another question. We don't get to choose our parents. At the end of the day, they're human beings. They do the best that they can, but mm. you can never get more quality out of a person than they already are. Than they already are, mm. yeah. You know, and some of our parents, they don't, they never been loved. So how can they have the quality of it? And what we think yeah. is because the way that they treated us, we will allow that in our lives. Mm. And we, we will, will allow other people yeah. to treat because us that way. Because it's familiar. It's familiar. Right. We think exactly. that because that's what we equate love with. The yeah. way, because your first love comes from your parents. Mm -hmm. That's where your first love is. And yes. that's going to define what love looks like to you. Yeah. And that's what you're going to go out and start seeking. Mm. And the unfortunate part is if you don't have some type of revelation to redirect you, yeah. mm. then you will continue yeah. to seek that type of toxic or whatever that, that, that is. That is the, the point. Yeah. The revelation yeah. is that's the wake up call. Yeah. You have to have the wake up call to, to see where you have been loving invalidly. And great point about the parents, because that was my next thing. Um, the, you know, the love of your parents and, and from where you starting um, with your parents, because I didn't have parents that I, I, I know my parents loved me, mm -hmm. but they couldn't show me that they loved me. Yeah. And for a while, I blamed them. Like, for a while, I was mad at my mother. I was mad at the the drugs. I was mad at my father for being absent. I was mad. I was mad. Mm -hmm. And what it, what it did for me was create a cycle of um, neglect. And so every time I try to love somebody else, they would neglect me mm -hmm. and then I would feel it. Yeah. And every time I try to love again, they would neglect me. And they, and then I started to develop. I don't like to be left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I still don't like to be left. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. leave me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's something that I work on every day because yeah. I'm like, I, I got to the point where I had to forgive my mother. I had to forgive my father. And I had to say, yes. you know, if I'm not able to get the love in that aspect, it's OK, because now I'm an adult and it's my responsibility right, right, right. as an That's adult true. to give myself that love that I did not have when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And now it's my responsibility to change that dynamic yes, yes, so yes, my yes. kids don't have to right. feel Absolutely. what I didn't feel right. when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing about what God does, and I'm not going to get religious, he will put people in your life to show you what that is. That is, Because yeah. what he does understand is that you didn't get that. Right. And he is not going to allow you to just keep floating through life without what he intends for you yeah. to have. Amen. So he's going to put those type of people in your life 
to redirect you and show you what love is. Most definitely. We will reject it because it's unfamiliar. And just like eating something that's not good in your stomach, you know, yeah. it's not, you're not used to eating that thing. You want to reject it, you don't want to keep eating it. Yeah. But when you find out how good it is for you and how it makes you feel and what mm-hmm. health values and things it yeah. you know adds to you, then you will begin to be like, oh, okay, this is good for me. This yes, does feel yes, good yes. to me. And you'll start to accept it more and then understand, Ah, this is what it's supposed, it's supposed to, to feel, feel like. like. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. This is and and we want to we want to stay right there with that because that <laughs> is such a good point. Yeah. This is what love is supposed to feel like. Mm. And if you're watching, we want you to feel that love. We, we want you to get healed from the ideas of what you think love mm. is and really truly find out what love is and I, I feel like we're teaching you well they're teaching you child <laughs> I'm sucking all this up but I feel like we can really um have a greater experience if we really dive deep into knowing what love is and what it, it does for us yeah, yeah. okay we'll be right back after this <laughs> Can you keep it real? Do you want to be on the show? Make sure you check us out on the web at creatingrahimbrazil.com and contact us on our contact page. I'll see you there. Gotta know your value. Know your worth. Watch the all new Mercy movie on Amazon Prime and RBTV Network. Welcome back to the show. Keep it real with Raheem Brazil. I want to thank you for tuning in on today. Um, if you enjoyed that commercial, make sure you share and like this video, but also just make sure you subscribe to this network, Raheem Brazil Network. Listen, we got two amazing individuals speaking with me today on the struggles of love. Maybe you struggle with love, maybe you don't, but I know I do, and I'm here to get all the juice that I can get on today. So everybody, please welcome back T. Marie and Mr. Chris June. What's going on? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I struggle with love, y'all. Mm. I, me. Can you believe it? Not true. <laughs> Not true. Not true. I yeah. struggle <laughs> with losing myself in relationships. I struggle with um, knowing when to put up boundaries, and I also struggle with. Um, being okay when it's time to separate. Mm. And so sometimes, like, when we hear love, people automatically go to um, man and woman, husband, wife, relationships. But love encompasses relationships in, you know, our friendship connections um, and just other, just other ways. And so, like, I've struggled with, like friendship connections as well. Um, that's been a major part of my mm-hmm. um, dysfunction when it comes to my love is knowing when to let go and not being hard on myself because that relationship have to end mm-hmm. and um, feeling like um, I'm like I I've done something wrong or whatever the case may be because I had a I'm going to say a a mind shift about three years ago and I woke up one day and I'm like I want better for my life and I started to work on on those things but the minute I started to work on my elevation I started to notice a lot of people was leaving my life Mm -hmm. and so that caused me to get really um insecure about the type of person I was and who I am as a person and then, like, when I lost, like, close friends of mine, it that was, like, really the icing on the cake. And so it almost kind of put me in a mindset, like, I don't even want to get that close to people no more. Mm-hmm. Like, especially, like, friends. Like, I just don't because it's like I've invested so much time and energy and all of this. And now those people are no longer with me. Like, what, what did I do? And that, I think that's what we were talking about, the attachment mm-hmm. thing, because I was so attached to people. What can I do to find the healing space to move on with my life? Mm-hmm. Uh, first thing you can do is set boundaries before you even meet people. 
you have to have those boundaries set before because you what happen is you'll start dealing with people and be like, oh, I need to insert. And they've already crossed those boundaries. And now you're afraid to say what your boundaries are because now you don't want to lose them. Mm. So now you'll continue to deal with them. Yeah. We need to set boundaries before we meet people. And once the very first time they mess that boundary or cross that boundary, like, look, and it doesn't have to be confrontational and it does not have to be mean. You'd be like, listen, the way you did that or that made me feel this way. And yeah. I really don't like how that's how this happened so if you you know if you wouldn't do that because it makes me feel this way that would be cool you know you gotta mm-hmm. let them know yeah. now they the, the choice at that point is either they're going to do it or they're not yeah. a person that continues to cross a boundary that you've asked them not to cross they don't they're not your friend they're not your lover they're not your, they're, they don't have any love or care for you you know what yeah. i'm saying so th- the first way to fix that is start with boundaries before you start mm. with feelings Okay. okay. Mm, start with boundaries before true. you start with feelings. Now, trying to heal from those things is really just coming back and realize what you deserve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being like, you know what? If this person leaves me because I'm expressing my boundaries, then they didn't care about me. Mm, you know, yeah. we care That's so much. That's a hard pill. We yeah, but we care so much for people. When you're an imp and you care for people and you just have a caring spirit, mm, you don't even put yourself true. first. Yeah. yeah. Everything yeah. else is first and people recognize that about you understand Mm -hmm. a person a leech a person that wants to be near you to get something from you they Mm -hmm. recognize if that's the type of person you are and they will feed off of that because they know if i do this then raheem is going to allow me to slide because he's going to care they're not going to say it a lot but they will they they recognize it Mm -hmm. pray recognize what they need to feed off of you understand what i'm saying so to heal from that is really to be like you know what I, I deserve better than this. Yeah. This does not feel good to me. I don't like what this makes me feel like, and I'm going to address it. If they leave, yes, it's hard. Mm-hmm. But it's just like we have to realize getting rid of parasites and yeah. disease and yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. You got to cleanse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to remove. I like what you talked about with, with boundaries because, you know, one of the ways you're setting that boundary is you're exercising saying no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to be okay with saying no. Sometimes it's you really have to, that's where your boundary sits. You're going to yeah. feel that little feeling where it's like, actually, this is not going to work for me, but you keep saying, okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. And, and you keep, that's your boundary. Just keep getting ran over again and again and again. Mm. until it boils up to the point where it's a problem. And you're like, where did this come from? I didn't think that this was a problem. Like, mm. you know, and so exercising saying no and learning how to do that. But at the same time, like, I would say as far as the healing aspect, give yourself grace. Mm. Give yourself grace, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so you're going to experience what you need to experience on your journey. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we think because... The relationship, oh, I'm gonna cry myself. Like I don't know, <laughs> just like we think because the relationship didn't work out, because the project didn't work mm-hmm. out, or whatever it is, that it didn't work out for us. But we got the experience that we weren't gonna get without it. Without it, mm-hmm. you know. So you take that, take that in, and you can repurpose that. You can turn that into music. I love that. You can turn it into a book. You can turn that into a, a you know, a show mm-hmm. and talk about that experience for you, and it will it will benefit you moving forward. Yeah. If your heart was in it and and it was for you and people and projects, they agitate parts of us that are necessary for our growth, but it is not always with that person, but it's with the experience. Mm-hmm. We have to give ourselves grace to maneuver that way. I love yeah. giving yourself grace. We that is so, uh, that's so true. But most, of, most of my, what I realized in my life, most of my most of my trauma is trauma is centered around not having the love of my father, even still to this day. Like I've talked to him and I and I, you know, have a some type of connection, if it's, even if it's just talk. But I always question, like, why don't this man like deal with me? Like, what is wrong? And I had to get to the space where. I had to give him grace because I'm like, Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's dealt with in his life. And that's, that's hard. It's hard. It's really hard Mm -hmm. to deal with. Mm -hmm. But like the moment I'm, I'm in that space and I'm talking to him. And even when we're talking, we're having great conversations in my head. I'm like, I I love this feeling, but at the same time I'm hurt, but I, I can't do nothing about it because you can't make somebody love you. 
You just can't. Right. And I'm I'm dealing with how how do I deal with that? You know what I mean? Well, I, no, know, go ahead. No, no, no. I will say I've I've been there before, you know, like with my dad, me and my sister, like she it took her a longer time to kind of let go of how dad lack thereof showed up for us. And one of the reasons I think that I had came to it sooner was because I realized that he's just a human being, too. Yeah. And he comes from a generation and a time where we didn't have these types of conversations. Yeah. Right. We didn't have this type of media. They could only aspire as far as they could see. And sometimes that wasn't even beyond the block that they right, lived correct, on. Right. You know, yeah. so to expect that they would have this understanding, they have repressed emotions so deeply that it would take them years of therapy to be able to get to that place. Yeah. And instead of us being frustrated because they can't show up in that way, realize that we gotta have compassion for them because they can't show up in that way. Because for every way that they're not able to connect with you is in every way that they're not able to show up in every other area of their life as well. And so for every opportunity or every relationship or everything yeah. that they would ever want out of life, they're not gonna be able to achieve because they're not able to feel that place, yeah. you know? It's only a core place that we really connect to life from. And it's that place that ends up getting guarded. And and so for every time somebody talks about their son or somebody talks about, you know, their great relationship, your dad is going through that even when you're not there. He may not even have the words yeah. to share. A yeah. lot of it, it's it's a I think there's a study that shows that the the less vocabulary that somebody has the less emotional awareness they also mm. have as well too yeah so although my dad is not a man of many words at all mm. so that says something yeah. as far as my expectation about him being vulnerable but yeah. sometimes looking at his parents talk yeah. to your grandparents oh, ask definitely. what what happened with them and it'll paint a whole new picture yeah and you'll just you love him in spite of that and it you know and because of your growth you you reach back yeah and give it Oof, y'all got me crying <laughs> on here but listen um before we go um we want to highlight what you have coming up so t marie what do you have coming up well um you know i just launched my third brand of wine i bought you a bottle mm, yeah uh, y'all haven't heard tasty uh, mm. wines i have three bottles now so we had tasty moscato to begin with yes. that was the baby then tasty red was launched last christmas yes. and then this year we launched tasty blush, blush. which is a pino okay. so my third baby i had my third baby really my fifth because yeah. i've got two other real yes. kids so i've had my third baby and it is an amazing journey uh should be on shelves in restaurants by spring late early summer yeah. Uh, and also, then we just launched a network, um, E3 TV. Yes, E3! E3 TV. Yes! Empower, encourage, and entertain. Uh, mm. It is a platform that has uh, that I created for amazing creators such yeah. as yourself. Mm. And that would give content to millions of people. Just, you know, what we see on TV now is so Debbie Downer. So it's it's. It's just for people to really just entertain and the negative. And we wonder why, how we feel, what yeah. we feel, because yeah. it's what we watch. Yeah. We don't watch enough positive influences uh, in images of us as black people, as black women, as black yeah. men, as couples yeah. in our communities. We don't see that. The news doesn't show us in that light. So somebody had to do it. Yeah. And so I was like, if not me, then who? Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Let me, it's time to create. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny that you said something about creating out of um, hurt. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of hurt I've been doing. You, if you guys know me over this last year. And, it is, yeah. and at first I thought it was busy work. Mm. That I was just doing something. It was actually God's work. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was stuff to keep my mind, right, right, you know, right, busy. Right, right. But it was also God pointing to me like, yeah. these are things that you're going to be doing. And this yeah. is for a reason. And this is why. Oh, yeah. And so I feel so... Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm happy about it. And I yeah. just can't wait to just share all of this amazing stuff because I'm, I didn't do it just for me. Yeah. Mm. I did it for 
people, people like you. Like mm. I did it for us as a community, yeah. us mm. as a people, yeah. us as couples, because yeah. they're important to me for us yeah. to grow. So mm. I'm excited about it. We're excited for yes, you. Yes, I'm excited about it. Yes. Chris, <laughs> what do we have coming up? Yeah. So I'm actually in a place right now where I'm quieting things down and writing a book Ooh. because I realized that I have learned so much yeah. uh, and I've done a lot of different things yeah. and I haven't taken the time to stop and realize who I've been and everything that I've been trying to make me. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like you, it's not about making it, it's about doing things that make you. Right. And yeah. we haven't taken the time to sit and see like, you know, I haven't taken the time to see who I have become and, or what has been revealed about who it is that I am yeah. in this and really focusing in on that mm -hmm. and in writing that because we think that we have to, we have to be out here and we have to be doing something. Mm -hmm. We're not human doings, we're human beings. So mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. learning about my own journey and learning how to be more honest yeah. and share from that space yeah. because at the end of the day, when we do this creative work, we're giving people permission to show yeah. up in different ways. Yeah. yeah. And I realize there ain't nothing but God. That's all. Yes. That's it. So yeah. how much more can I give away? Yep. You know what I mean? And then sitting in there and, and letting him teach me in the process. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Because it ain't so we, we sit down and we look at him like, oh, snap. Right. Like, and no. then you're right, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you realize you can create the vision yeah. and do all yeah. of that. So and just by so, getting yeah. out the way a little bit, mm -hmm. yes. you know, get, get a little the bit way. out the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, listen, I want to thank my guests for coming to speak with us on today. Um, I had such an amazing conversation, very healing. And if you are, you know, needing your healing space, I want you to definitely, definitely take time out. Um, give yourself that grace, like Chris said, but also self-reflect. Self-reflection helped me. Um, it helped me to determine the the route that I needed to take. Um, but also, y'all can journal. You can do you can do a lot of different things to kind of help ease your mind. And you know, find a mentor. That's what I did. I found a mentor, and you know, I'm looking at the greats like Steve Harvey and you know Oprah or whoever, whoever you like to listen to. But if you don't have a mentor, check out these two on this couch. Because <laughs> they will be great mentors. I know Chris does, you do uh, you do your videos and, and everything. Um, but I want to welcome y'all to the show officially. This is the very first episode. But I also want to thank my very special guests for joining me on today. So y'all make sure y'all keep it real with Raheem Brazil. We got another impactful episode coming up next week. Bye. <laughs> And I think our generation is really good for that. Millennials have been the generation that's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no. Like, yeah. I don't want to work for this company for 40, 50 years, yeah. and y'all give me uh, a retirement Rolex. party. Right. And then what? I'm going to be 65, okay, and then I'm going to have arthritis. Well, and not, yeah. And because I spent so much time worrying about other people, mm -hmm. I took time away from myself in accomplishing my goals. Yeah. Oh.